So we're driving on 290, headed toward Taylor, Texas, and the Hutto Detention Center is actually in Taylor. So every Monday morning, a group of facilitators gets in one of our cars and heads up to run our group. women embark from their own countries on long journeys. You can imagine the miles and miles that women, for example, from Brazil are traveling. They're not taking a flight to the border of the U.S. and Mexico. They're traveling trains and buses and on foot. Right now we are headed very close to the Hutto Detention Center. Um, you can see there's tractors and, and other kind of machinery around this windy road. Um, and the Hutto Detention Center is actually somewhat hidden behind this area and train tracks. One of the features of detention centers is that they are often hidden from the public. And they're put out into rural areas um, and they are not very accessible in many different ways. So since in Texas we have two of the three family detention centers in the entire country and we have the only all women's detention center, Hutto, which is right behind me, we are uniquely positioned to do some of this work in terms of providing direct services to women and children that are currently detained in our immigration system. So from the moment that women and children cross the border into the United States, they are immediately criminalized and that affects the way that they're treated, um, the places that they go, and it can really have a traumatizing effect on them. And while there are some fewer restrictions of movement inside the center compared to maybe your average prison, um, there's still regulated meal times, where people can go, when they can go, Guards have to have eyes on them. When we go in, we have to have a guard with us at all times. Things that really in this country tend to be applied to people who have committed crimes um, are also applied to these women who have come to the United States to seek protection through asylum, which is a legal process that they're entitled to do. There was a woman who I worked within the Hutto group for several months. Um, she came off and on to the group. She had a particularly challenging trauma experience um, that I heard a little bit about from Honduras. And she had come here seeking asylum. And she um, was a middle-aged woman, was always very kind to everyone else and supportive of others in group. Um, but she was really dealing with some severe symptoms of PTSD. Um, she described flashbacks, nightmares, um, anxiety. So one of the things that we did with her was work on her panic attacks through square breathing, where you breathe in and then you hold your breath and then you breathe out and then you hold your breath again and you move your finger. And she was shaking like this when she stayed after group one day to talk to us about this. And so I pulled up a chair in front of her and asked her if she knew about square breathing and she didn't. And she was having so much trouble holding up her hand to even attempt it that I sort of asked permission and I put my finger on hers and she sort of kept her weight on it. And we just did this for about five minutes and did the breathing. And by the end of it, she was actually able to support her whole hand up. So a simple intervention that takes five minutes that is with someone who's being caring and compassionate was able to at least regulate her in that moment. And I think that it's very clear to see how the system she was going through was additionally traumatizing and triggering her in a way that was very negatively impacting her emotional well-being, her view of herself, um, and creating additional distress and challenges for her in the center. Um, so I think that, for me, that stands out as 
the clearest illustration of what a detention center can do to someone who has experienced trauma, but also what people like us can do, even in five minutes, that at least brings a sense of comfort, a sense of support, a sense of connection in that system. Our group can provide a space for them to be able to show their emotions, for them to be able to be vulnerable in ways that they're not allowed to be in the detention center, to strengthen the connections that they've made that are helping them get through the challenges of being detained. Um, that's, that's something that keeps me coming back every week. Sunflower in particular has a lot of hopeful connotations and can be found in Latin American countries as well. Being very aware and focused on roots and what comes with you is something that from having worked in detention centers I feel like is very important. There's a lot of strength in what they bring with them.